once we've done that, the rest of it should be pretty tree. And we're going to say, let's just call it my tree. And we're going to um, create one by saying that um, there will be a data tree, open brackets, of type. This is coming from Rhino Common now. Rhino.geometry.polyline. That's what we end with, right? Okay. And um, then after that, there's going to that's defining the type of data tree, and we'll just use the parentheses open and close um, to create it with nothing inside. All right, so we've created our data tree, and now we just need to adjust um, the methods for Rhino Common, and then store everything on my tree. All right, so um, the Rhino Common um, methods you can see here, just like we did RS. Rhino dot allows us to access the Rhino common methods. And again, the smart hint comes up every time you type in Rhino dot. All right, here are all the different kind of um, categories, right? You can access the geometry part of the module. Then you keep going down further to get more specific. There's arcs, B reps, curves, lines, etc. And then we chose polyline. All right. So um, to use those methods in the same way we did here, um, we're going to do, instead of RS evaluate surface, we need to say, uh, we need to use the Rhino common version, right? Which is rhino.geometry.surface.evaluate surface. Oh, no, sorry, just evaluate. Okay, so rhino.geometry, these are each time drilling down to get more specific is the same thing as saying rs.evaluate surface, right? Um, this um, method has a hint. It should show a hint whenever I open the parentheses. That can't be anything on the rest of the line. So open parentheses, help on method for evaluate. It's going to ask for the surface, u, and v and then the number of derivatives, right? And that's just um, uh, another option that we have to define, but we're not actually going to, we don't want any derivatives, so that's just going to be zero. So we're just going to reuse uh, what we had here, surf i over num, j over num, comma zero. And then um, the... If you go, you can't access the uh, same help uh, menu as you can here, but if you are in Rhino and you went to Python script edit, you can access from the help, sorry, from the, um, the hierarchy tree here on the left, Rhino is the Rhino common module, right? So here, if you found Rhino geometry, surface, evaluate, right? Here it shows um, a very simple description. I guess it's the same one. Um, and hopefully soon there will be a more in-depth help like there is in the Rhino script uh, help. But for now, let's just um, note that we don't want any derivatives. And what we get as a result is actually multiple um, pieces of data. We get a Boolean, which says, was it successful? The point itself in 3D space. And then uh, a vector, which is the normal vector of the surface. So we really only want this. So what's going to happen is it's going to evaluate the surface with no derivatives. It's going to return a list. So what we need to do is say that we only want the point. So we'll access the first index, the, or the um, the data at index 1, which is the point in 3D space, and store that in the dictionary. All right? So that part's complete. We've now created our evaluate surface action, storing the values in a point and returning it, um, or storing it in our dictionary. Okay? And while we're talking about Rhino Common, let's go ahead and do that for the next step, which is um, wherever we create our polyline. 
So in the same way, we're going to go to rhino.geometry.polyline. And it says, um, give me an ordered set of points. Well, luckily, it's the exact same thing as what we had, right? So I'm going to take my uh, method that I just uh, found through the drilling down into the Rhino module. And I'm going to replace my rs.add polyline. If I do it right here, I still have, I'm going to double check my parentheses are closed. Looks good. If I do that for um, my other two as well, now I'm, I'm using my Rhino common methods to define my polyline. Right? And again, we have to do this because the data trees, um, um, to be able to use the data trees, we have to use Rhino common specifying a type. And we have to supply the Rhino common version of the geometry to our data tree in order to, for it to actually work. Otherwise, if you use the Rhino script point with the Rhino, Rhino common data tree, you'll get a mismatch. Okay, so we've done our modification, and the last thing is that we just want to um, put our polylines onto the data tree on the path that we want to create. Right, so um, here we have um, inside of our i and j loop, we need to decide where our path is gonna be created. In this case, let's say that what I want is each one of these columns of, of polylines to go onto the same data path. So what that means is I need to create my data path inside the I loop, but before the J loop, right? Create a data path. And remember, this is going to be for my columns. Okay, so in the same way we created our tree, right, which the tree is the collection of all of the paths, let's make a new path called my path equals gh underscore path. See how we have, um, we've used this for our data tree, and we're using uh, this module, the gh path module. Uh, for the creation of the path. And inside this, we're going to say, what is the path going to be defined by? And let's just use i, our counter, right? So the path is going to be defined by i. And then when we ever, whenever we're appending our quad or our try, we don't want to append it, but we want to add it to our data tree. So instead of cells.append, we're going to say my path dot add my quad. And again, replace that for my try A and my try B. So we're creating the path, and then we're storing the quads or the tries on the path only in the I loop so that all of those uh, polylines will ret be returned as uh, columns. And then the last step, is that cells, which is what we were using as our output before, equals my tree. Okay, so now we've um, accessed some subassemblies from Grasshopper, created our own data tree, converted our uh, geometry creation actions to Rhino Common, and then stored, instead of on a dictionary or a list, we're storing our geometry, which is polylines, on a path and returning the results of all those paths, which is our data tree, to our output. So I have an error. And it's because I mistyped here. Down here, where we add our, um, our path to the tree, uh, it's a slightly different format that we need to use. It's my tree dot add the quad to my path. There we go. So my, inside of my tree, we're going to add the quad to the path. So this is like appending 
the quad to the path. It will go on the last spot on that list that that path defines, and then it will be stored inside the tree. So let's make the swap here. Update my error in the tries. Okay. Let's test that. Missing my parentheses. Close parentheses. All right. Execution completed successfully. So what do we get? We now have cells that are organized in data paths. So each one of them, regardless of whether or not I do it in quads or tries, I'm getting rows of uh, cells. If I wanted to verify that, I could take the center point of each one of my cells, take the polyline center, and then display, as we did before, the point list. Right, so there are my columns in quad format or in tri format. So actually, the script that we gave you uh, as a reference before the webinar didn't include this as an option as well as creating the data trees. So this one is um, even more robust than that, which is um, we can toggle between quads and tries.